Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Mocha. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Todd, and today I'm joined by the amazing president and CEO of Square One Springfield, Don DeStefano. Before I go on, is it DeStefano or DeStefano or how how uh, luxurious do you want to sound? I was just going to say DeStefano always sounds so royal. It does. No, it's DeStefano. Huh. Hmm. I feel like I'm in the Mediterranean, <laughs> like on a boat. <laughs> no, instead of the Amalfi Coast to Stefano, we're uh, like Naples to Stefano. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. There you go. Um, so before we get into some awesome stuff, um, why don't you talk a little bit about Square One, what you do and what they're doing? Sure. Like amazing stuff. Square One. Let's see. We are a definite cornerstone of the community. We've been doing this work for over 140 years now. Wow. Wow. It's pretty long, continuous service to the community. And we focus on two main things. One would be early learning and care of children. Mm -hmm. More specifically, children who come from working families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So families that are um, really trying to keep themselves stable and self-sufficient and need care um, possibly over longer periods of time than other families. So really supporting families and children. Okay. Um, we learned about 20 years ago, it's not going to be a shock to any of your listeners that if you're supporting children, you can do better work if you're supporting their families. Mm, and yes. so we initiated some family support services. Say that one more time. You can't support children if you're not supporting their families. You can do great work during the day, mm -hmm. um, but children don't belong to the systems mm -hmm. that care for them mm -hmm. or educate mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. They belong to their families mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they belong to our community. So mm -hmm. we see ourselves not supplanting or doing something that parents themselves can't do, mm -hmm. but we all know it's difficult to juggle Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we see ourselves as part of a family, as part of a community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we prioritize children. Mm -hmm. That's our expertise. I love that. I love that. So just quick, like, give us some, uh, some ideas of stuff that you guys do. Sure. So, yeah. so square one is one, we don't tend to sit back on our laurels mm -hmm. for long. And the children we're serving um, tend to face some adverse childhood experiences. Mm, they mm. come from families that may be struggling with food, mm, um, mm. who might move more often mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. other families mm -hmm. who are um, cobbling together multiple jobs mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And so when the children that we serve at Square One um, come to us, we approach the education and care of those children with not so much a deficit mindset mm. with what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. um, instead, we look at them as perfect vessels mm -hmm. with gifts to bestow. And it's our job to create an environment that allows those gifts to come forward. Absolutely. So at, at square one, we don't, we don't try to balance by having, um, a diverse population of children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think other programs try to mitigate some of the challenges mm -hmm. by adding in a diverse or a more diverse group. Um, at square one, we kind of said these, this is our community. This is what we need. Yeah. And if that means that we have a saturation of children, who need to be educated and cared for in a way that acknowledges their trauma. Mm -hmm. Again, not from a deficit perspective, mm -hmm. um, but these are children that are going to know how to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. These are children that are going to understand their peers in a way that those of us that haven't experienced some of that childhood mm -hmm. trauma, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can be empathetic, but we don't, we just don't know. Yeah. So, um, we are really investing time and resources in making sure that the social emotional learning mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. square one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is top notch. We're investing in, um, on-site clinicians mm. not to pull children out, 
but to join the classroom and right. be part of the classroom. Right, right. So it's a lot more about inclusion. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. And I also love this idea of, you know, having confidence in your model, mm. you know, to be able to pull that off, mm -hmm. you know, and um, having the vision as a leader to be able to pull that off, you know, and because I think in my experience, you know, a lot of people do look at the deficits, mm -hmm. you know, as a reflection of the agency. Right. You know, how can we respond based on these deficits? Um, because what you're what you're explaining to me sounds very familial. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm you're the aunt, you're the, the aunt that shows up with the cake and says, says to the parent, I'll take over today. Right. That's fantastic. I love that. Auntie Dawn. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I've yes. got nieces and nephews. <laughs> they might say I'm strict, but um, yeah. that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the support services we provide in our family services department, it's a program called Parents as Teachers. Mm -hmm. I saw that, yeah. It elevates parents. Mm -hmm. It says you are the teacher. Mm -hmm. We're your support staff. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. here to support you. Um, you are the primary caregiver. And so the sort of the cornerstone of that program, the modules we look at is family well-being. Mm, Even mm. the the title of those components is positive. It's mm, family mm. well-being. It's strengthening the parent-child bond. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we all know that you can't do that kind of work if you're hungry, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you're worried about where you're going to live, Absolutely. if your car broke down. Yeah. So certainly those basic needs are addressed in what we do. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have a basic needs module. Right, right. It's just right. embedded. We don't need to talk about some of those things. Yeah. Um, and so I think by elevating parents as the experts mm -hmm. and seeing ourselves as the support staff keeps us all in check. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not the mother. Mm -hmm. I'm the aunt. Absolutely. I like that. So let me ask you a question based on that. <laughs> have you had the opportunity to look at the growth and development of parents from that perspective, mm. you know, and being able to be like, oh, yeah, this is really working. Mm -hmm. You know, that investment, um, that support that you're providing, you know, that that buffer, so mm -hmm. to speak. That's a great question. And I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> perfectionist at this. So it pains me to say we don't have the best evaluative system mm -hmm. for parents. Because at square one, we prioritize children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Children are the measure mm -hmm, by which mm -hmm. we, by default, measure how the parents are doing. Because we kind of assume if children are thriving social, emotionally, if they have good peer relationships, they're able to self-regulate their emotions. Mm -hmm. And we see a change in behavior, mm -hmm. which is the communication system by which children tell us. Mm -hmm many times how they're doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or what they need. When we see changes there, we can extrapolate or make some educated assumptions yes. that they're getting the support. parents are doing well Absolutely. too. Yeah. So yeah. parents kind of get credit yeah. Um, yeah. when we see that positive growth through kids. But yeah. I'm hoping eventually that we're able to give parents some feedback that's yeah. based yes. um, yeah. in quantifiable and qualitative mm -hmm, mm -hmm. types of feedback. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. Good place to go. So, because I, I definitely want to come back to that. Um, sure. Are there any gaps that you see? So doing amazing work in the community, mm -hmm. have there been over the years some pervasive gaps that you see, that you've seen that have been more difficult to address? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I thought about this before I came and um, parents who are trying to work non-traditional hours, mm. the definition of which is something outside of Monday through Friday, mm -hmm, nine mm -hmm, to five. Mm -hmm. If you are attempting to work in the healthcare system mm -hmm. or a 24 hour business mm -hmm. where your shift is six to two, mm. you don't have childcare. There's, we open at 730. Yeah. Yeah. You might get lucky and find a family child care provider, those that have those businesses mm -hmm, out of mm -hmm, their home where mm -hmm. they care for kids, mm -hmm. that opens at 530. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At Square One, we manage a system of family child care providers and we do our best to encourage them to operate as early as possible mm -hmm. or as late as possible. Yeah, as needed. Yeah. 
But I think the gap that exists in our community and probably outside of our community as well is there's just not an inventory mm. of non-traditional mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, tragically, we see parents, especially single mothers who might be working alternative shifts, mm. having to make really difficult choices yeah, yeah. about where their children sleep at night mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they need to go to work. And yeah. so um, Square One, in partnership with a lot of our other collaborative community partners, um, you know, we're looking to create options for people where right. you don't have to think about a really difficult decision about where your kid sleeps. Yeah, yeah. And non-traditional jobs tend to pay more. Yeah. There's yeah. overnight shift differentials, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got to build that. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you think the part of the answer could be um, buffering parents more soft skills mm -hmm. to help address this as well? Because again, if it's, if it's, if they can't address the technical issue, yeah, right, recognizing that the technical issue is full intents and purposes in concrete, right, right? being able to um, address some of the soft skills like coping skills, mm -hmm. you know, those types of things. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely one of the, um, you know, when I think about, you had asked about training needs mm, and, yeah, you know, yeah. where we see ourselves going with that. A lot of the folks that are parenting children mm -hmm. in our community, as well as folks that are working in service mm. of our community, have their own childhood traumas mm, to yeah. grapple with. Yeah, yeah. So I think when you talk about the soft skills of being able to self-regulate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if, if I feel anxiety mm -hmm. rising in my body, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. I can identify that my heart beats faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my stomach might hurt a little bit. Head hurts a little bit. Um, I'm able to cope with that because I can identify those feelings yeah. and I have mechanisms that I've learned yeah, to help yeah, me. Absolutely. But for a lot of folks who haven't done that work, who, who don't have the luxury of time mm. or professional support mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. develop those self-regulatory skills mm -hmm. and the triggering um, acknowledgement and then the coping, mm. it, it, your own childhood trauma tends to be your toolbox, be your toolbox. Absolutely. That's what you've got. And yeah. so you almost react in a childlike way. Mm -hmm. You revert mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, square one isn't alone in this belief, but we mm -hmm. practice this behavior is just another form of communication. Mm, yeah. Well said. I think a lot of folks see behavior as a, um, physical tool that someone is purposely behaving in this mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or they personalize it. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. me upset mm -hmm. versus what are you trying to tell me? Mm. Yeah. What are you trying to tell me? And so I think we've got multi generations mm -hmm. of people trying to survive, yeah. trying to thrive. And everybody's got some kind of, of, impact whether it was in their childhood or secondary trauma from absolutely. doing this work yeah absolutely so um that's something we're grappling with yeah yeah so both staff as well as stakeholders right yeah 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 sure. so i think we want parents to have those soft skills yeah. of understanding what it's like to have relationships you mm -hmm. know that's that's one of the core tenets of our early learning and care program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm is we want children to graduate from square one and know how to be a friend. Mm. Yeah. How yeah. to recognize their own emotions. Mm -hmm. And boy, the icing on the cake is noticing your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. having a tough time. And yeah. what do you do about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think those are the kinds of adults that can start to really shift um, the way our community operates. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And extremely impactful. Yeah. Too, if you think about it. Um, so with that in mind, what sort of trainings have you thought about or do you do with your staff, mm -hmm. you know, that allow them to be um, agents of social change, right. for lack of a better term? Yeah. 
We have done a few things. We started a um, kind of a group conversation. Mm -hmm. Others might call it a support group, Mm -hmm. a group Mm -hmm. conversation, but we just came together to talk about what it's like to work in an environment Mm. where the predominant nature of the people you're serving are struggling Mm -hmm. in some Mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? And what does that bring up in you? And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of folks, especially in the education profession, we're used to talking about other people. Mm. Mm. Yes. We're not often talking about ourselves. And so we try to avoid any professional development or training that is too introspective. Right, right. Um, but it's amazing when you open up a small group conversation about traumatic experiences for our kids, mm-hmm. how much people mm-hmm. subconsciously weave their own experience Absolutely. and start to unpack. Yeah. And if we keep the focus on the children we're serving mm-hmm. and we don't turn it towards people, I think we we're finding more success. People don't feel as threatened. People don't feel as defensive. People don't. So I think having the right facilitators for Mm -hmm. that kind of work, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we do that work with consultants. Mm -hmm. We don't do that work with our own management. Mm -hmm. So people don't have to worry about this. My supervisor. Uh, Absolutely. Um, but I think there's a constant need for training. The One of the things I'm most proud of at Square One is we started to realize with um, the needs of our children in the classroom, we were, we were doing a lot of work on our professional development days. We'd mm-hmm. bring in experts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when we did our follow-up, we often heard from our staff, I totally understood it on the day of the training. Mm-hmm. It was magnificent. I was so proud of what I was learning. Then I got into my classroom. I had <laughs> no idea. Like, <laughs> yes. How am yes. I supposed to do this? Yes. Um, and so one of the core tenants of our mental health program for children is the bulk of the work our therapists are doing are in the classroom. Yeah. And yeah. we said, yeah. as much as we elevate parents as teachers, our teachers can be clinicians. Yeah, like we need absolutely. to get rid of the titles, yeah. get rid of the um, segregation mm-hmm. of professional mm-hmm. expertise. Mm-hmm. And if you just do your work, mm-hmm. our teachers will learn. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. students themselves. Yeah, um, but if you purposely call people out or pull them out of their natural environment, it's harder to learn. I think that's a huge issue that a lot of n- human service nonprofits struggle Mm -hmm. with Uh, because I think sometimes there is this um, pressure to provide um, culturally responsive. When I mean culturally like work responsive training, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's so that you can say that we're doing this. But sometimes what gets lost is this, um, how the training is absorbed, Mm -hmm. right? How it becomes utilized. Like, and, and it's funny because I was talking to a group of people today and, you know, about my staff and I was like, this is who they are. Mm-hmm. Ergo, you have to adjust. If you want it to be 100% absorbed, you have to adjust as a facil- facilitator. And I think sometimes that's what's missed, mm-hmm. you know. But the other part that's missed is when we start humanizing the training aspect and saying that I am purposefully investing in your toolbox as a leader, mm-hmm. it becomes entirely different. Mm-hmm. You know? I totally agree. I think that's maybe I'm being overcritical and and certainly over generalizing educators. I, I myself am mm-hmm. an educator, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I think in the traditional sense of education, mm-hmm. which professional development, we often think we're just going to class mm-hmm. as part of our job. Mm-hmm. And I think when you educate, there's this traditional notion of I have something that you don't have Mm. mostly in the form of information. Mm -hmm, So my mm -hmm. job is to impart what I know into your brain so that now you know it. And most of us who are doing the work in this world have realized either Mm. the hard way Mm. or (laughs) (laughs) to your point, there's got to be an equilibrium in the room People learn best when they are valued for what they already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And if you think by engaging in this professional development activity, 
I will gain as much as you, that we're in this to yeah. learn together. Yeah. Um, I think there's a great deal of social change that mm -hmm. comes from the dismantling of that hierarchy yes, yes. that we have had yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. traditionally in our country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think if we can start to dismantle some of that and come together in a way where we value mm -hmm. what each other already have. Mm -hmm. And that, that has been where we've seen so much of our success. It's less yeah. about here's a piece of paper. When you have a child who's dysregulated, do steps one, two, and three. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, and unfortunately I think for some organizations, it's a revolutionary thought. Mm -hmm. The, I think the other unfortunate part is, as a leader, you could say, if I did this, would that decrease staff turnover? Mm -hmm. Would it decrease staff write-ups? Mm -hmm. Would it increase um, staff involvement and internalization of joy of mm -hmm. working in environments, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, a lot of human services places will say, well, we can't pay you enough money or what you deserve. And sometimes I've thought staff don't always want that. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to be recognized as the individual power that they are contributing to. Mm -hmm. Training is definitely a way of doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I aspire mm. to get there. I think mm. um, as leaders, if we are basing our own self-evaluation, if I evaluate mm. my own leadership, mm. um, and I think that I have to be the one that ha holds all the knowledge. I have to be the mm. one that has all the answers mm -hmm. because someone might test me versus I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. but I'm smart enough to hire and mm -hmm. retain and support folks that actually know a lot more than I do. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, that actually to me makes you a better mm -hmm. leader, mm -hmm. but I think not, being able to do everything for folks who aspire to be a leader, mm -hmm. it it's it can counteract itself. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. Like, um, it takes a little while to build up that confidence to say, "I'm actually proud. I don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some of this." Um, I prefer my staff to say. I can at least go to the leadership at square one, and we can problem solve together. Yeah. Yeah. I'm famous for saying, I don't know the answer, but let's figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that's becoming a little bit more of an accepted model yeah. in terms of being a broker of, of information, mm -hmm. right? And, and your expertise becomes, you know, it becomes like how I use this, how I've used this brokered information to, to guide my team, right? Therefore, I don't have to be, like you said, an expert in everything. But I know how to get the information, right. right? I know how to, I know how to use it to build my team up to make my organization better. Right. You know? I think some of that is the critical thinking and problem solving mm. we're trying to strengthen in our own children, mm. right? Yeah. I mean, I think today we can solve problems pretty fast. I mean, Google's a pretty good problem yeah. solver, the, right? I the mean, great I, philosopher Google. <laughs> great yes. Philosopher. <laughs> yes. But it's also paralyzing. I yeah. think our default position is mm -hmm. to just type it into Google mm -hmm. or ask mm -hmm. Siri. And so we've lost that sort of grassroots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Yeah. Um, and I think part of that is we have not created environments where it's okay. Right. To take time to solve a problem. Right. right. Um, and so a lot of this dismantling mm. of you have to be right. You have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You have to know everything mm -hmm. um, is part of the social change, mm. right? Yeah. Those that have, and those that don't have the great polarization mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. money, wealth, property, mm -hmm. knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're looking to do at square one. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I say to people often, especially folks who ask, um, tell me the challenges that your children have, mm. right? How can I help? Tell me the challenges. And my default position is, oh, actually the kids are perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, the kids are perfect. Mm -hmm. 
their challenge is actually us. Yeah. It's the adults around them. Yeah. That need support, that yeah. need training, that need education, that need yeah. resources. The kids, they're perfect. Yeah. 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 We screw them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we need to stop thinking in that adult hierarchy where adults know best, mm -hmm. adults know mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. Children are pretty transparent. If you yeah. follow them, yeah. Most of the time you, you might get lost. You'll get dirty. That's mm -hmm. for darn sure. <laughs> um, but you won't fail. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. One of the things that I've been struggling with, so I've like you, I've worked in uh, human service, a lot of different levels and even the school system at a lot of different levels. And I think the, just my observation so don't indict me on this, um, is, you know, we have the most impact on our kids at this early learning phase, Correct. right? But also the most investment mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, leaders like you are saying, you know, I were focusing on growth and development holistically, mm -hmm. right? I think one of the things that I struggle with is that somewhere along the line between early learning and elementary school and middle school and high school, it gets lost, mm -hmm. right? I wonder, I wonder how revolutionary or even how impactful it would be if your model at square one was incorporated at Springfield high school, mm -hmm. right? Like Springfield elementary school. Mm -hmm. My question is like, why not? Like what stops it? You know, mm -hmm. what stops this, this bridge from happening, mm -hmm. you know, to where, you know, we, we go from investing in this commodity to, to a number, so right. to, so to speak. Right. Like, right. You know, I know that's dramatic, but. No, yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. I grapple with the same thing. I was trained as a traditional elementary school teacher. Mm. I love quantifiable outcomes. Mm -hmm. Your attendance rate was this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> we tested you. You assessed at this level. Mm -hmm. These are the the questions we asked. These are the answers you knew. So I know how to fill in the gaps yeah. for what you might have missed. Very scientific, very rigid, very mm -hmm. structured. And so when we think about something, the bridge between mm -hmm. learning and let's call it to 12 public yeah. school learning. Yeah. We have kindergarten readiness mm -hmm. and it's a long checklist mm -hmm. and it ranges from academic knowledge. Do you know your ABCs? Mm -hmm. Do you know your colors? Mm -hmm. Do you know your shapes? And it also has social emotional. Do you mm -hmm. have friends? Mm -hmm. What do you do when your friends are upset? Things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's become an education has become an industry. Mm -hmm. And in the very same way Henry Ford built his assembly line, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have sort of, and I'm making a very, again, a broad Absolutely. generalization, yeah, yeah. that we've turned education into a bit of a factory. Yeah, yeah. Right? You yeah. do this, you get this outcome. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Know, you need to do all these steps. True learning, when we think about the brain development of a child from zero to three, mm -hmm. when it, you're just on fire, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. mean, your nerve endings are just connecting at rates of speed unlike any other time in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we know is successful is sort of an open-ended learning environment where children can naturally explore, they can experiment, yeah. they can problem solve, mm -hmm. um, and with limitless time and resources, they can engage in just about anything, right? right? And so when we think about where more privileged children enter kindergarten, it's not so much that they had someone tutoring them on their numbers and their shapes and their colors and their letters, but they had experiences. Mm. They were more likely to have traveled. Mm. They were yeah. more likely to have been exposed yes. to um, different forms of art mm -hmm. and expression mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so when children are limited in their learning, mm -hmm. it, your brain doesn't develop 
the awareness yeah. that it has, the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And so back to the problem of early learning and, and K through 12, the best early learning environments are open-ended. Mm. You're just letting a child explore mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you put that over a more rigid assessment, things that the public school systematizes, um, they don't match up. Mm. And so there are some common factors, mm -hmm. but they don't come together mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so I think to be really revolutionary, mm. I think this idea of exploration and experimentation, I mean, think about it if we had it at every grade level. Yeah, absolutely. But the yeah. time was different. Mm. Clearly there's a space for academic work that needs to happen, yeah. instructional assessment, things like that. But imagine if from zero to three, you were given a safe environment to crawl, walk, poke, yeah. try, yeah. fail, fall mm -hmm. within a safe boundary. And if kindergarten maybe was the same thing, but we look at more time in terms of structured mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. I think if we eased into it, I feel like, again, big generalization, mm -hmm. you've got really successful early learning environments, even here in our city of Springfield, where as a private preschool operator, I can be as creative as Absolutely. I want to be. Yeah. I have safety yeah. and health regulations, but I can be as creative as I want to be. Yeah. It's sort of a stark then change when you enter kindergarten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we say that about preschool in public school environments. Mm -hmm. We worry that rigid seat assignments, you have to, everyone has to do the same activity. We worry about what that stress does. Yeah. And so when, you know, folks might say, well, we, we um, have stronger kindergarten readiness scores. Mm. Well, academically speaking, Maybe that's true. We yeah. might disagree on the tool you're using, mm -hmm. but by third grade, if you've stressed out a child so much, mm. they are no longer eager to learn, yeah. to explore and experiment. Yeah, They're tired. And so, I, I mean, I worried about the same thing with my kids. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be ready for kindergarten? Do they know their letters? Um, I understand the stress that comes with the judgment and mm -hmm. the assessment mm -hmm. of your parenting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you I mean, what if we lived in a world where you didn't have that? Yeah. Where your children could just have this um, safe, you know, um, where there were no structures yeah. where you could learn what you were interested in. Yeah. What the world would be like, what would we be churning out in terms of, because we tell parents all the time, they'll learn to read. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Yeah, absolutely. One way or the other. They'll right? learn to read. Right. They will know how to write their name, but we're not going to worry about that at three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating to see a three-year-old who's that cognitively astute, yeah. <laughs> astute that they can do that. But we're going to measure our success on how well your child can solve problems, mm -hmm. identify feelings, and mm -hmm. be a good friend. Because mm -hmm. if you can do those things, I mean, apply that to adults mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. our work environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that segue. Um, because I wanted to touch a little bit on some of the recent things that have happened in Springfield, right? Sure. Some of the, the volatility of it, so to speak. Um, at what point do we start creating uh, resilience in response to our environment, mm -hmm. you know, in, in early learning programs, you know, cause I, I get, you know, the, the coping and being friends and stuff. But when we start talking about, you know, this is the neighborhood that you're going to grow up in, mm -hmm. let's just say, you know, this is the family that you're going to be around. This is the corner that you're going to be on. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that do you think would, would be something that, that square one would start to think about in the future? Let's mm -hmm. just say. I feel like it's sort of, a, you can't serve a child mm. and a parent. I mean, we see our parents and children every morning. We mm. see them every afternoon. Mm. Um, 
kids tell you everything. Mm, yeah. So you know where they're living and what corner they're they're hanging out at yeah. or what park they went to mm-hmm. or um and I think historically we've taken that information and put a period at the end. Yeah. Oh, that's yes, nice. Yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. We store it away. Yeah. What we're trying to do at Square One, and maybe this is being a part of it, mm. is activating our curiosity. Mm. Tell me more about that park mm-hmm. that you walk to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How was the side? Was the sidewalk bumpy? Mm-hmm. Did your bike? Mm-hmm. Were you able to ride your bike? Mm-hmm. So initiating that processing early. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. trying to you know yeah. plant the seed of yeah. that sidewalk. That sidewalk was yucky. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of holes. Mommy couldn't push the Mm. stroller. Mm. Mm. So you start to think about your built environment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the expectations for what should be Mm. basic neighborhood safety. And so I think part of the resiliency we're looking to build is let's start to think about the world in a broader space. So Mm. rather than I went to the park with mommy this weekend, that's great. Tell me about the park where they're were there swings? Mm-hmm. What did you do there? Yeah. And that kind of curiosity starts to build resiliency mm. because you yourself start to think like, oh, I never thought of that. Okay, right. what can we do about that? Yes. How yeah. can we build yes. some muscle? Yeah, so initiating this critical thinking right. at a young age. Yeah. And Love it. caring about your neighbor. This is the family you're going to be with. Yeah. Your family loves you. So if, you know, if you tell me your belly hurts because, you know, you didn't have a, a lot of food to eat, mm-hmm. let's talk about what did you eat? Mm-hmm. And if you could, what would you want to eat? Yes. Yeah. And then um, I, I think that goes a long way in caring about other people mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. I think we're afraid to ask sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then nobody's resilient because none of us is, are thriving. Mm-hmm. We're just living day by day, scared to say, yeah, how was your weekend? Yeah. <laughs> Cause you might not want to know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's curiosity mm-hmm. is, is a key word. I Be curious. That. I love that. I think that's is a fantastic place to stop. Mm, thank you so much. Thank this was you. great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for caring about our community enough yes, to do this. Yes. And you're an amazing rock star. So oh. I'm, I'm saying that yes. publicly. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> did my family hear that? <laughs> they will. <laughs> they will. Um, would love to have you on again. So we'll let you know. Would love yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you again. And it great. was a pleasure. Thank you. And pleasure thank you everybody you. for tuning in to Money Money Mocha.